the WDC explains it all. Writing your introduction, dissertations and theses. In many ways, the role of the introduction to your dissertation, research project or thesis is similar to that of any essay or report, to introduce the reader to what is to follow. Your introduction is still key in helping the reader navigate your writing, in fact, even more so given the greater length. It's still about 10% of the total word count, and it's still often written towards the end of the process so that it can accurately reflect the final document, especially given the unpredictable nature of research. However, in the context of a research project, there are a number of differences and additional challenges to consider. It's still helpful, though, to begin from your reader's perspective and consider the three questions they will have for you when they begin to read your work. What are you doing? In an essay or report, the lecturer often knows what question you're answering because they set it themselves, and your introduction would reflect back your understanding of the task that you've been set. In a dissertation, research project, or thesis, however, your question is usually of your own devising or if you've been allocated a project, you often have some leeway in how you interpret it and take ownership of it. The task of the introduction is therefore even more important in providing your reader with a clear, coherent articulation of your research question or problem. Your reader is in the first instance your supervisor, who you will have discussed your research question with from the very start of developing your proposal, but who will still want to see that you can articulate your research aims clearly and precisely, especially if they have evolved over the course of your research. Your examiner will not be the same person as your supervisor, except possibly at undergraduate level, and even then there may be a second marker. They will not be familiar with your project, so it's even more important that your introduction explains your research questions, aims, problem, hypothesis, etc. They'll be assessing you not only on how well your research addresses the problem that you set yourself, but also how you've identified and formulated a suitable research question which makes sense and is valid. Introductions typically also provide background information about the topic, and this is also true of a dissertation or research project. It's even more important to demonstrate that you have a good grasp of the context that you're researching, that you have mastered the relevant knowledge accurately and comprehensively, and the reader can have confidence in your authority. However, don't assume that your examiner is necessarily an expert in the exact topic themselves. Research is necessarily very focused on a small niche aspect of a field, and your examiner will be enough of an authority to assess your research but it may well be genuinely helpful to them to have an introductory overview of the key knowledge, such as relevant history, factual information, explanations or definitions of concepts. If your dissertation or thesis is being archived where other scholars might consult it, or even published, then your background overview of your area might be helpful to a more general reader too, to help them place it in their own knowledge of the field. In some cases, you might want to include your ultimate conclusions in your introduction, or you might want to withhold your findings until the conclusion proper at the end of the dissertation. Why are you doing this? This question is even more important in a dissertation or research project than in an essay. You're doing original research, which extends our understanding, even if only a little bit, rather than writing to demonstrate your learning of established knowledge. You therefore need to frame it as a complex problem needing intensive scholarly examination rather than a straightforward information gathering exercise and justify why this research needed to be done. Not just why you were interested, but why it would contribute meaningfully to scholarship. Your literature review will pick this up in more depth as you survey what has already been written and explore the research gap that you've identified. But the introduction is where you begin to justify your project. This is true not just if you've developed your proposal yourself, 
but also if you've been allocated a project as you demonstrate that you've taken ownership of it and understand its purpose. In some dissertations, the literature review appears as a separate chapter, but in others, the literature review might be absorbed within the introduction. How will you do this? This question addresses a number of things, structure, focus and methods. A research project, dissertation or thesis is a long, complex document dealing with a multifaceted topic. Whether it's an 8,000 word undergraduate dissertation or an 80,000 word PhD thesis, your reader is going to need careful guiding through its various chapters, sections and subsections, or they'll get lost, far more so than in a shorter essay or report. Your introduction plays a key role in signposting the reader, setting out a route map of the structure so they know approximately what to expect, in what order, and why it's organised in that way. Your table of contents on its own won't make much sense without this explanation. That way, they'll pick up on the signposting that you've embedded later on, in the introductions to your chapters and beginnings of your sections and paragraphs. This is particularly important in a dissertation which doesn't have a set structure, such as is common in the arts and humanities, or if you've deviated from the traditional structure, for example, those common in an empirical project in the natural or social sciences. You might also explain to the reader which choices and decisions you've made to narrow it down to a manageable, focused research project within your word count and time constraints. You might have chosen to set yourself particular limits on the scope of your research, for example, focusing on a particular context, time span, type of data or source materials, or which examples and case studies you've chosen to focus on and why they're appropriate for this research. You might also explain to the reader about your methodology, the theories, models, techniques, definitions, processes or approaches that you've applied in order to address your research question. This will tell the reader what kind of study this is. In some cases, this is dealt with more fully in the introduction. And in other subjects, especially empirical research in the natural or social sciences, you would go into this in more detail in a methods chapter. Your introduction may not include all these elements. It might give a partial or full treatment. It might not include them in the same proportions or in this order. Ask your supervisor or look at dissertations or theses in your subject if you're not sure. But if you address the reader's three questions, your introduction will fulfil its purpose.